is they make sure we all at the right place, right? Sometimes you see Quickstar or Amway, awesome companies, personal development, unlocking your potential. But this is not it. This is um, a Lelo Olelo class. And again, we want to go ahead and welcome everybody and mahalo everybody for coming out and make sure you guys are all in the right spot. So um, I'm going to be your alaka'i today. My name is Hanale. Alaka'i means guide. I'm definitely not the teacher because this is not a class. This is a course. I call it a craft course because I use some of our crafts or we call our um, hana no eao, which is our art. I use our foods, our mea ai, that you just maybe sampled, I hope everybody got. I use our plants, our mea kanu, right? I use mo'olelo, our stories, mana'o, our beliefs, right? To better share our culture so people can explain us, um, our, our people, the, the country of our ancestors and our grandparents. So first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody out. I'd like to acknowledge your presence. You could be any place, and luckily, you chose to be here because um, Tita, Sophie, she actually works today, so she's here automatic, right? You all chose to come out. My first two classes, my first class, I had Jen Ruggles. Yay! Yeah. Right, Puna's top wahine, right? You got a couple fans in here. I'm console woman. And, um, you know, today I get one special guest, Chris, here. He's, um, he's been a standing rock and he decided to come down from Mauna Kea, so we definitely like, welcome that presence out here, with right? support from people and our people, and um, um, acknowledge our ancestors, first of all, those before us, um, acknowledge the generations coming after us, and everybody who's here with us, and people who actually couldn't even be here and would want to be here. My friend's supposed to fly in from Oahu, they tried, you know, they get their truck broke down, their construction people, and they would love to be here, they couldn't be here. Uh, my first class, we had um, same night as Kaikena Scanlon, you know, Utu Utu Bang Bang, wow, so people came out, that was big for me, you know, they could be anywhere, you guys could be anywhere, and you guys came out here, so, I just like, you know, respect that, and mahalo, mahalo you for your time, and, um, you know, ho hopefully it's worth your time, it's worth your day, it takes a lot, you know, for us to come out, I'm sure it, it takes a sacrifice for you to come out, especially for single women like you, you know, single parents, or we own businesses, or, you know, we have our own things to do, so again, I just like, um, thank you all for coming up. Um, today, we are in a Lele Olelo class. Lele means to burst or to jump. It also means to attack. It's an outburst. So when I say Lele Olelo here, I mean um, to jump. It's a head start or jump start or kick start or burst, right? So I want to burst you into our culture. I want to give you a jump start into our language. If you're not going to go through those normal routes, you can come here and learn with us, right? So um, again, I hope you're here. And when you look at stuff like this, or you look at books, or chants, or signs, or prayers, you know, you see it, you hear it, some of us is raised around it or not. We're coming here, planning to visit, just learning a language is cool, right? Some people is banned from their language, not only us. So to re regain the ability to learn who we are through our language, and the sound and the symbols in that language is pretty much what I'm here to do is, you know, take you on a course with us, like the canoe, jump out in the water, and you get to ride with us, and I'll be your, your alakai. So make sure you're in the right spot. We want to thank you. Great, you can go ahead and move on. And uh, we're Perfect Harmony. So I like Perfect Harmony. To me, it's kind of like a souped up, low key. I like to be undercover Starbucks. I got outlets and I don't have to deal with a lot of people. I'm more of a tea person than coffee, although I love coffee, right? Um, and that's just me, I like this spot. So I'm grateful to be here. I'm, I'm, um, I like to say I'm an entrepreneur, I guess in my own way, right? Maybe we'll, that's, up, that's not up to me, right? So that's up to the people in the community. And, and um, So again, we're gonna share some topics today and um, I'm sure you're gonna take some of that home with you. So after this class, you get to take me home with you. Right, and me, I'll take a little bit of you home with me. So we're gonna have that exchange here on time and space and space and time and stuff like that. So what you see early on, you might not understand, but it's my goal to have a, to get you to, to see my perspective. Again, I'm one person, I speak for myself, and I speak for nobody else. I'm gonna speak to your personal experience today. Hopefully you can take some of my personal experiences home and have, which is another person's experience for you, and have a personal experience yourself. So again, you know, here we go, ready for this introduction and this basics.
Before I start, I'm going to kindly give you a little brief introduction of myself so we're not complete strangers, if that's all right with you. Is that cool? Tita, she's on me. She got the head nods, the eyebrow wiggles, and all of that. So, again, my name is Hanale Hadolani. I'm 35 years young. I was born and raised here in Mokuo Keawe. Um, I went to school up here at Waikia High. Um, I have a genealogy, luckily, you know, thanks to my ancestors, almost 7,000 years, 360 plus generations, and um, I'm grateful for that. Now, I'm also a legal bastard. Dad never signed the birth certificate. That's one of my jokes. As you can tell, I'm not a comedian from that opening joke, but I fell in love with my dad later on in life. But I've been through those battles, poverty, domestic violence, drugs, right? I actually failed the eighth grade. I'm a failure. Right? She has a high school, wasn't for me. No college, undergrad, I get double the classmates now. Right? Cool. Um, you know, I've been through bicep, drug rehab counseling early on in my life, 1997, I'm 35. You know, so, again, my, my experience comes from personal experience. I'm not a teacher, I never went to school, I don't have the degrees, I'll be the first one to say. So if anybody tells me, yeah, that brother never went to school, he don't speak this, that, I don't, and that's the problem. I'm going to tell you a little story about me, but it's tied to the classes to understand how much I went through and tried and still wasn't able to speak. I figured out a way and I'm going to share that way with you. My name is Hanale again, some people call me the Kalo Man. My kupuna is Kyoki the Kalo Man Fukumitsu, Abel Simeono, Liu Kya, I'm Liu, and um, Herbert Hall, you know, some of the kupunas from around the islands. Um, Puka Singh, Adama Singh, the Papa Kolea brothers, Mahela, Mahela Singh sons. And you know, after, after being a failure and going through the school, I just, school process I just told you about, I just started hanging out at the beach in the parks, right? And I met my reverend, Mr. Roger Christie, and my kupuna, my first kupuna, kupuna Abel, my second kupuna, my first kupuna would be considered Herbert Hall up, up in Hakipu, Oahu. He's now currently on Molokai. And, um, over these years, it's just like shit. I'm sure that, you know, I either had, a, I had to go compete against my classmates in the job and work field economically, you know, politically and stuff like that. But with my, my credentials, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the, the brightest crayon in the box, you know. So, I chose my culture. And when I chose my culture, I started to get into the canoe. So I'm going to share some of my stuff here. This is my two years, 2013 and 14. I got into the one-man canoe. Never paddled before. Awesome sport because it's not about your height. I invited my friend from Paddle. He get, he's like six feet long reach. I taught us height and you know what I mean, 127, 132 on a good day. And I thought, you know, I, I thought I messed myself up, but the canoe, the canoe is the only sport that nobody takes the same course. You can use the elements, the winds, the tides, the currents, the jetties. And I ended up winning two years in a row in my class, my category. I the, that's the races all around the island on both on Pa'a Pa'a Pa 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 Race Association and Kanaka Racing Association on Oahu. Had to be about 8 miles, 14 miles a day for practice from like um, Makapu all the way to Waikiki, right? One man canoe now, my own steersman, my own powerhouse, my own, my own, my own um, number one. So I eventually go into the ch channel and I'm a, I'm, I'm a scaredy cat, I wouldn't swim too far out, but now I can. I went to the channel, right, Molokai to Oahu, first year, third place, second year, first place, wow, right, right timing, right space, snappy, good coaching, good equipment. So, I eventually got into Kalo to better my ability to paddle, um, super food, slow burning car, pro, you know, all, all those, it's, get the, the iron, magnesium, um, complex carbohydrate, right? Gets me a lamp longer lasting car. It's great, it doesn't turn into sugar like most other cars. So Kalo, I ended, ended up getting into that, right? Then take the top Kalo, I steam it. That's what you got today, Kalo Pa. Steam Kalo, steam paddle. I take the Kalo, I make the most traditional pre-contact Hawaiian dessert, known as Kulolo, Ku Tuoro, right? And Kololo is just kalo and coconut, taro and coconut. This is famous for people all over the world, especially Asians, from Thailand to Philippines, right, all over, India. Um, and we can go on and on, but what they're doing is they're mixing roots, like cassava, with coconut. 
So when I make my treats, like some of you ate from Japan to China to Philippines to Thailand to India, it reminds them of their home in a way. What I'm doing is I'm creating foods, may I, that is representing our treaties of this country I'm going to share about. We have treaties all over the world with Japan, with Spain, right, with Italy. In Italy, I made gelato. For the Asians, Japan especially, I made mochi. My, I, uh, I made paletas with this family. Um, I made, which is a Spanish style popsicle. Paleta really means wooden stick. They took the wooden stick, put fruit on it. They put the fruit in the cooler, make them cold. Next thing you know, they turn it into ice. It's a popsicle. Most people think of paleta as a popsicle. I learned how to make paletas from a Spanish family, gelato, because I'm utilizing our treaties to come up with my products. The products you eat is vegan. I don't use honey. Do you know that vegans don't eat honey? So most people don't know that. They call it stuff vegan. Okay? Kololo, you go to the store, you get 10 ingredients. It only takes two. Taro and coconut. They use machines. I don't. I hope this represents the quality that I bring to you. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life for me. It's how I eat. It's how I plan. It's how I travel. It's how I swim. It's like I'm on a canoe on land. So I'm going to share some of our perspectives to you. So again, I got this tradition, sophistication, and innovation going on. This is my three topics. I got tradition in my food and my plants you might have experienced. I got some sophistication in my puzzles you might see here, my earrings, right? Our crafts that our Kanaka and our people make. Some of the most ancient crafts known to mankind like Laohala. And I got sophistication in this PowerPoint, which I'm really PowerPointing my application. I have an app now. Okay, so you can take me home now. I used to talk to people at my boots, they used to get pumped up and when they leave, everybody, and most people know the um, retention span is small. So I'm gonna share with you this much so you get this much. If I share with you this much, you're gonna get this much. So you're gonna pick up some stuff today, whether you use it or not. But when you go home tomorrow, my class, my course, Kalamai, is gonna start to um, awaken in you, right? It's like cool, it's gonna rise out of you. It's gonna make you rise. So again, I hope this shares a little bit about me and gives me the qualification to speak to you and not being somebody who is a specialist or practitioner, cultural, cultural specialist, you know? That's not me, right? Some of us never went to the schools. So let's go ahead, makau kau? Means, are you prepared, are you ready? And remember, when they say, are you ready? That means, are you prepared? That's like a restaurant who has a prep crew, dishes crew, and cook. Cook come in, everything is ready, right? Are you prepared? Did your prep and your cook and everybody's in place? The cook will not wash the dishes or prep the cucumbers? So that's what we mean when we say ma kao kao. This is my code I want to introduce you to today. If you're taking notes, you want to remember that. Some of you might be visual, so you're going to look at it. Some of you is audio, so you're going to listen to me. And some of you can aesthetic. You've got to write that stuff down. Hopefully you know who you are. That's some of the part of the class today. So that's a square, that's a V, that's a C, that's a V, and that's times two. You might not understand that, like I said. Sometimes we don't understand lots of stuff. I'm gonna explain this to you. Let me explain. This square to me represents our highest of Kua, God. I don't use God because God is like a played out name, it's like the Jehovah's believe. Give us the real name, not a phony name. I'm not a Jehovah, but I respect that, right? Some people call him Yahweh. Some people call him Yahweh, Yo, right? Kiave, like the street. So that's a sound going on. But that's where it represents to me my, my culture, which became a religion. Those four pillars I use is Ku, Kane, Lono, Karaloa. You put those four pillars together, you make one square, Kiave. You take that house, it's like a story of Maui, to get fire. You gotta build a house for it, you gotta know what wood it's coming from, and you gotta build a nest for it. I'm building a nest and a house to better understand Olelo Hobati. I'm building codes and formulas. Even though I was failed the eighth grade, cheers of high school, no college, I never even made it to pre-algebra. Some of the feedback I got some from teachers who own schools and feedback from people double my age is like, you're teaching algebra. Other classes teach with sound and symbols. You're teaching math. Okay. Now, my last class, a Chinese lady told me, this is how Chinese teach their language. 
pictures, codes, and you combine it, and it means more stuff. Okay, that's fine. I don't know. I'm not a professional. I'm not an expert or a specialist. I just can share my personal experience. And what I've created for the problems I've had, maybe some other people can feel the way. So let's go ahead. Here we go. Okay. So I'm using my, my philosophy. Philosophy is what drives me to do be have. Question is what drives you to do be have? Something simple like learning a language. How's that? That's pretty fair, right? I'm not getting too crazy. Now, STEAM is an acronym. I made this. It's like STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. I think there's a flaw. Science and math is the same thing. That's called physics. You hear on the radio now the trio and they call it that art. Okay, I had this over 10 years. It's articles in corporations and in my coupon is nonprofits and stuff. But this is to, it was designed, it's a philosophy and an acronym to build enthusiasm. Not intended to inspire or motivate. Some of you may see me around. Actually, I don't know most of you, so sometimes we think we're more popular than we are. I used to be a motivational speaker. Got to inspire people, move them with my words, right? But sometimes it can motivate people to get the thread meal with the bells and the whistles, right? Read your blood pressure and, you know, you track your miles. You might watch YouTube and get inspired to do hempcrete or aquaponics. You buy the hydrogen, you buy the pipes, you buy the, 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 the fish, you buy the, the, the tank, but you never do it. It's sitting in your garage, it's in your car, it's under the tent. What I'm talking about is enthusiasm when you sold yourself. And for years it took me as a motivational speaker, as I love to motivate and inspire people, how I just used to move people with my words. That's called charisma. The character is an enthusiasm. The last four letters, I-A-S-M. I am so myself. So I try to sell people to sell themselves. Don't take me and my sincerity for truth. Okay? So again, it's my philosophy and my lifestyle. This is how I create apps. This is how I create the food. That's the quality. I go after the quality, right? So here we go. Um, it's a lifestyle, gives us purpose, it gives us passion, it's my curriculum. But I'm not a teacher, so it's a concept. You ready? It's like a steamroller. Right. So real briefly, Britt, you know, the, our PowerPoint, I'm really long, all of her. I'm going to talk today, I'm sharing you the language of our country. A country of my ancestors, known as the Hawaiian Kingdom, Ko Hawaii Pai Aina, the Kingdom of Hawaiian Islands. Those are the only three words and names for this country. The country code H period, I period. The reason why I say that is some people call this the Kingdom of Hawaii. That's a Washington DC definition for a place that doesn't exist. I'm gonna go that to you one more time. Hawaiian Kingdom, the Kingdom of Hawaiian Islands, Ko Hawaii Pai Island, started by a king in 1839. By 1843, we're the first country that's non-European, colored, non-white to be part of the European League of Nations. Okay, when other countries had slavery, here people was free. We had people escaping other countries to come to this country from all over the world. Remember the treaties I talked to you about? One of them is Anthony D. Allen, first runaway African slave. Makes it to Hawaii, smuggling his way in ships. Arrives here and eventually, in the journals of the Reynolds and Loomis families, serves our king. Kamehameha III, Kawiki Ole, where he holds grand balls at Anthony D. Allen's house. And we know the stories from the journals of these foreigners, the Europeans, Reynolds family, Lumen's family. Remember, don't take my sincerity for truth. Research me. So, we had lotteries. We had telegraph cables coming from California to Honolulu in the 1800s. We had electric cars. We had generators, electricity, right? flushing toilets before the White House was built. Our own currency, our own language, treaties. I'm talking to you so that we can understand the people through their language. How can you understand somebody if you don't understand their language? Doesn't matter the people or the language. It's just understanding a culture through their language. Hard to understand someone when you don't understand their language. So let's move on. We just wanted to touch on that. We're sharing the language of our people. One last disclaimer. I'm actually not here to teach you how to speak 
Hawaiian, or Oleno Hawaii, I'm here to share with you how to better pronounce true better understanding how our words is built to better understanding how to deconstruct those words so you can better read so my class is not to speak you can go to the professionals for that and I'm not that but I hope you can join me and I'll share with you how to better pronounce how to better build and how to better read to better speak okay? so let's move on Pronounce words, to build words, to read words, in order to speak words. Some of the classes is speaking is so high maka maka, some of the people can't even comprehend it. When we had guests in here in the last class, they missed one month. They don't go back to the basics. Their whole college stuff is blown. It's stretched through 12 years, tuitions, blood quantum. It's like a carnival ride, it's, you've been into heights. Some of you don't even qualify. So what are you going to do? I made a class for you because that happened to me. I actually qualified. But we was in so much poverty, we was too broke to even sign up for free things. But that actually kept me a free man. That's what Kanaka means, free man. And I'm proud of that, to be free. So let's move on. Here's an example of most of you in my class today. Most of you is of age. Right? Meaning, you're not going to start off at preschool or kindergarten in Kamehameha or Explorations or even Hawaiian Immersions. So your only choice is to get to college at 32 to 23 years old because you're never going to go through that door. And community college at least, that's anywhere from 2500 to eight grand, based on how much years you want to go, based on community or actual college. Right? And how serious you are, like I said. Are you serious? This door, I'm going to share you some codes. It's not the norm. I'm not saying this is the standard. I'm not the professional. But I believe, I've sold myself. I think you're going to get something from this. I hope I don't waste your time. And I hope it's worth your time and your day. So again, here we go. Jumpstart your level. E komo mai. I have it right here. E komo mai. Here comes the crafts. I break it down. E komo mai. What I'm doing is I'm using vowels, consonant vowels. Nobody taught me that. I actually went to a couple classes. I was invited to Kamehameha Kapalama on Oahu because of my food. I did the Duolingo thing, passing with flying colors. I really got good at sound. Bing, bing, boom, boom, bing. Right? But I never learned anything. I told you about this paddling, this canoes, this deals of my lifestyle. Even I don't know. And I tried. So good luck. You know the worst thing? Is when people think you speak your language and you really don't. How's that? So let me share with you. You like this? Ankh is like, this is feeling me. Ankh, are you feeling me? I am. Okay. I am. So magical. I'm going to give you some codes. I'm reminding you. It's a formula. Never been to pre-algebra, never been to algebra. But hey, this is what I came up with. So if it doesn't kill you, I think it'll help. Here we go. Mau, mau, mau. Hi. Olelo Haoli, Haoli has 26 letters. What I'm saying is English has 26 alphabets. A to Z. I'm a Kanaka Maoli. I'm not a native Hawaiian. That's like Kingdom of Hawaii. It's a Washington DC definition. I'm a Kanaka Maoli. A descendant of the ancestors of my country. A Kanaka Hawaii is somebody who is born in this country, like Stanford Dole overthrew this country, thought he was an American because his parents were, tried to run away. But when Cleveland and Lilio Kalani got a hold of him, he was really a Kanaka Hawaii. Born where? Right here. So it doesn't matter if you're 100% Filipino, 100% Japanese. If you're born here, your ancestors was the Kanaka Hawaii. And if it just so happened, no, no derogatory feelings towards anybody. If you came here, you wash up on the sands, right? Some of us got here on a vessel, right? Boats. Now we got planes. Soon we'll be drones. However, you came here. You're Kanaka Maori. That means foreigner. In this case, I'm using that as English. 
This is a Kanaka suit. Kanaka Dene. In this country, from where they are from, their language, not Native American, not Native Hawaiian. See, some of our own people call themselves Native Amer Native Hawaiian. It's like an Apache and Navajo calling themselves Native Indian. Some of your own people don't know the words. That's what I'm going to teach you today. Words is the most affordable, most effective way to change anybody and anything. And I hope some of the word changes I share with you today, like Hawaiian Kingdom and Kingdom of Hawaii, helps me and you grow into being having better morals, political views, and economic views. That's what my task is about. So, Olelo Hawaii has 12 letters. Five vowels, seven consonants. Just like the Hawaiian moon calendar, some people get two new moons, four full moons. It changes a lot. It's like stories of ten. Some have 13. I do too, but that's a times two. And I'm going to share that. Okay. So let's move on. Here is the vowels. This is what it looks like. Now it can be A, E, I, O, U in Olelo Haole. Or it could be I, O, U, A, E. And that's where we come up with Yahweh. Kiawe. So this tone start to be similar. So this is what it looks like. The vowels in Olelo Hawaii. See, I've been through some classes. I've been through some apps. And it wasn't that basic for me. Might be for you, might not. I hope everybody gets to take a little something based on your experience in this. So here's what it sounds like. I'm not going to treat you like you're in preschool. Like my Tita who was up there, she was about 23 years old, right? 26. I'm just playing. That's the cartoon character I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is, I'm not going to treat you like a child at preschool because you're already of age and around Olelo Hawaii. It's all over your world in books and newspapers and the signs and the stores. So, I expect you to know a little. Is that fair? So, A as an account, a count, or ahi, ahi means fire, or ahi is also a fish, the tuna fish. So, ahi, right, in Samoan is uh, afi, but ah as in ahi, or account. So, we got our first building blocks, which is our vowels, we got ah, 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 right, the crafts. Then we got E as in N or as in Eva. E, N, Eva, right? So we're using the crafts again. N, Eva, E. I is an Easter or Evie. Evie means bones. Some people don't believe in Easter. I is an Easter or Evie. E, E, that I, that E changes, that I becomes the E, right? Olelo haole, E. I, Ole Lohawai, E, E, O, as in old, or Ono, as in yummy, or Ono the fish, right? Ono, O, O, old Ono. See this? This is the best way I could teach myself my culture because nobody could help me. This is personal experience. U, as in ooze, or uku, U, U, right? Using a certain amount of coding. So I hope you get a concept, because again, you're gonna be this is gonna kick in when you get outside. And move on. Here, we're gonna look at the consonants. I never know how to spell consonants. And there's only seven. It's like the constellations, and it's kind of crazy. But once you get it, it won't change on you. Right? So H K L M N P W. Olelo Haole. The thing is, is in Olelo Hawaii, these consonants don't travel on their own. Okay? I'll explain that. Before I do, I want to let you know how the ho'i ho'i ea. Ho'i ho'i 
means to return or restore, like the holiday. Ea. Ea means roots or culture. Return to your roots. Restore your culture. I'm going to share with you how to ho'i ho'i ea real fast with our language. You take that K and change it to a T. See? Fun fact tip. Tip is to ensure promptness. It's supposed to be given ahead of time, not after. I'm going to give you a tip before we get a little bit more into this. Ho'i ho'i ea, change the K to a T, the L to a R, the W to a V. That's why the W sounds like a V sometimes. Does anybody know the Hawaiian word for sun? La. Who's that? La. Okay. Does anybody know the Hawaiian, the, 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 the ancient Sumerian word for sun? Maybe Egyptian word. La. There you go. So if we take our L and change them back to an R, what is our word for the sun? Now we're talking. I hope you take some of this stuff home with you. They changed it on us. Not only banned it, maybe even had death penalties to speak it and teach it. I'm talking about our language. And even what they gave us is changed to make it easier for them to understand. Them meaning anybody else other than the culture trying to be understood. And how you understand the culture, you don't understand the language. You like change their words so you understand it. You lose character. Remember the character we talked about? So let's move on. This is what it sounds like. And before we get into that kalamai, pardon me, here's me explaining how consonants work. You only see consonant vowels. Never a consonant on its own. So now that's called a C V. And you never see a V C or a C C V or a V C C. Nope. Now you got a house for this. So now I got a black box to house all of my vowels and all of my consonant vowels to help me better break down a word like aloha or hawaii or mahalo or la'au paina or, or a chant I can break down those words now I can tear it apart honolulu humuhumuluku apua and I can put it in a house like a nest like a mother right and I take that house and I better pronounce it to controlling my vowels and my consonant vowels and not get that mixed up like carrying le, l-e-a into one whole house because all consonants are accompanied by only one vowel so together they form a consonant vowel it's like somebody who is loyal right or considering a marriage they never have more than one companion so, therefore, we form consonant vowels here, utilizing that concept in Olelo Hawaii. So let's move on. This is how they look now. When I take a vowel and connect it to all of the consonants and come up with my consonant vowel table, this is what it looks like. Here, what we see is the H, with A E I O U, right? And so on. So when you take Hawaiian words, this will make every Hawaiian word, paragraph, sentence, chant, or prayer. This entire chart. And this is the only way to build those words. So therefore, with the first five consonants times, I'm um, part of you, vowels times seven consonants, you got 35 combinations plus five vowels to make every single word. I don't have 12 years to talk to you. I don't get the tuition money, right? The same community college. But I hope you get something from what I've created as a solution to a problem I have. So let's move on and let's look at how this sounds. When I connect my sound, to my look, 
and make it a sound to combination, here's what it looks like and sounds like. H plus A is ha, he, ki, ho, hu. Pretty cool, right? I learned other ways. Other ways of sound, other ways of pictures. I'm teaching you formulas, codes. Even though I'm an 8th grade failure to a high school, no college. We follow the same pattern with all consonants. Move on. What you're going to get when we go back to the table is an exercise. It's kuleana now. Are you going to take this home and practice? Are you going to take me home? Ha, he, ki, ho, hu. Ka, he, ki, ko, ku. Give me that one, huh? La, le, bi, lo, hu. Let's go. Ma, he, ki, ho, hu. Here we go. La, ne, bi, lo, hu. La, no, ho. Ka, he, ki, ho, hu. Wa, we, bi, wo, hu. Some of you may have been to courses and classes and read books and have kupuna, teachers, teachers, family, kumu. And most times I've got feedback and was told. People never taught me something, one of these things. My brother wants to ask a question, we'll say, hold on, because we're filming. Write that down. We're going to have time. Thank you. Let's move on. I'm, I want you to take me home. You're not going to learn everything today. You're going to learn a lot. Retain a little. And when you wake up, your brain is, it's not like your brain is exploding, your brain is growing. Okay, that's what I'm doing, that's what's happening right now. But you need to observe in order to absorb like a sponge. So I'm giving you a chance, audio with auto, uh, with auto audio, visual, and kinesthetically to better understand me. So I hope my formulas is working. And it's starting to look like it is, because a lot of me is getting a little fidgety in a good way. So, I'm going to give you a Dr. Seuss ride now. You ready for this, huh? My Polina, which means to remember, my, my course and the way you take me home, the way you get better, the way you package this up, is you need to read with your eyes first. Before you can speak, you got to read with your eyes first. So, if there's no L, there's no R, there's no word or alphabet for sun, there's no numbers, no contracts, no permits. Is that thing still going to rise the next day? Right. Absolutely. That's how you determine your source from the resources. That's what this class is about. No matter what people say, they cannot change that on me. Right? No matter, people might be grumpy, it's an L, it's supposed to be an R, they call it sun. But we're in three language, two languages. We can go to seven and change that to all kind of names. And now you're caught up in the corner with language and words and numbers. I'm telling you, when you determine the source from the resources, you can do this without even talking. You don't need the bells and the whistles and the sounds and the, the things. It's very simple. Not 12 years. Blood quantum, height, and tuition. Not my course compared to others, just to say. Read with your mind after. So now you're going to read again and still not with your mouth. I need you to read with your mind. Then when you even start to read, actually read, read silently first. Then read out loud. I need everybody to know what's going on with you. Read in the closet. That's pretty good, actually. Right? Imagine what, uh, right now, I just came out of the closet. Okay. Read. I'll be sounding out in the shower. Sounding out in the bed. Sounding out to the sky. I sounded out to my pets. However, make sure you have fun and enjoy it. My whole course is about entertainment. That's just another tip and another guide. Let's go ahead and no, tone it down a little bit. Ang smiles explains it all. I'm going to give you a couple codes. We're going to take a little break after this and get back into the second part. Real briefly, here's the easiest words to build. I'm not going to teach you words like anui nui, rainbow. 
I'm going to teach you the easiest formulas with my codes so you can slowly lele into olelo. How do you like that? So, the easiest words to build is the vowels. A, E, I, O, U. Those are actual leaders, they call it, right? Comes before or afterwards or in between. It's like ekahi or kahi. You can use the e kahi or not. It's an emphasizer. It's like ho -o, right? My kai or ho -o my kai. Nui or ho -o nui. It just, it becomes stronger. It's like you can turn from the great to ultimate. Cool to extra cool. Okay? ho -o is to emphasize. A E I O U is a leader. It's a, it comes after, it's part of a word. It can be or not. So the e those are the easiest things to start with, but the easiest words to start building with my formulas, my codes, is a V plus times two. So, I'm gonna get one of my blocks. So first of all, I remember that every Hawaiian word, aloha, Hawaii, whatever, I gotta get my house, keabe, four pillars. I'm gonna put it over, first of all, my vowels. I'm taking my vowels, and I'm gonna use my times two. I believe this is the easiest words to build. There's nothing easier than a times two on a vowel, okay? In order. So I'm going to teach you in order how to learn words and the easiest words to build in the simplest way, in the simplest form. Not by how you talk and your lifestyle and your name and introduction and your, your, your things. I'm going to teach you in a formula. It's like a red carpet. I'm going to grab you by the hand and walk you past the snake or the kiabe thorns or the quicksand, right? Or the mud. The cut uh, or the lava hole, the lava two, I'm gonna guide you. I'm your ala kai. Okay. So V plus times two is the easiest way to build words, or let alone what words, utilizing my formulas. That's a a n n e e o o u. They actually tell a beautiful story. A a is a small little root. Imagine that. Use your imagination. E e is to climb. And mount. E, um, e, the e is to bristle, like leaves in the wind. O is to mature. And then U is when I'm stripped. This is how I share and in invite you to learn with me. I don't know how other people teach, and I don't speak for anybody else. This is my personal experience and my personal course class. I'm the programmer, developer, designer, director. Um, what else I can be? Executive something, right? I got an executive in the Chris. So the reason why I say this, okay, is V plus times two is not V plus V, right? Because V plus V can change and get complicated. Does that make sense? So I gave you my easiest code, and this is a simple code. Wow, you see that? I created this in my notebook. I used to get busted doodling in school. Maybe that's how I failed. But now I doodle away, and you guys show up. Because there's value, and I hope I bring value to the marketplace, to the community. It's a public benefit. It's my outreach program. So, wait, I'm gonna let that. Anybody know the Hawaiian word for you? Okay. Huh? Oi. Oi. Right? Aloha vau ia oi. That means I love you. Oi. That's a vowel plus a vowel, not to be mistaken as a vowel times two. What? You see that? Here, I can take the O and the E and make OI and flip it and make EO real fast. And now you get pretty serious. EO, kalamai, EO with the E and the O. You guys hear that up in the mountain, right? EO, it's a confirmation, you agree. You see how fast this VV can be way different than the V times two? Okay. So I'll share another one with you. Does anybody know the Hawaiian word for I? 
Instead of you, I. I'm going to say I. Does anybody know? It's up here. Maybe you guys can guess. Which one is it? Okay, nobody knows? Awesome class. Some of my other classes, Jen Ruggles in here. Man, she knows most of the things I'm asking. So, the, the Hawaiian word for I is a U or AU. A, U, AU. Okay? So, there again, I'm going to use a VV. But I'm sharing you with words now, and I've not been using consonants, consonant vowels. This is all just with vowels and my formulas. And my red carpet, or umeke, my bowl, on how to teach this, or share this, or guide you through better jumpstarting your whatever. Anybody know the Hawaiian, the, what, what I means, AI? I know in Japanese, that means love. In Japanese, hana means flower. I, the show. We got some Japanese in the holiday today. So, I in Olelo Hawaii means food. I in Japanese means love. When you flip that again and you go ia, that means fish. Ia, fishy. Okay. Ea, that means roots and culture again. Remember, like I shared? So let's move on. Oh, practice makes permanent. If you can take us home, right, take your notes and remember some of these codes, you might, you know, get one of one or two lessons out of here. So let's move on. Here's where I start to share some of our crafts, like I said. Lao hala or hala. Lao means leaf, so that's the leaf of the hala tree. Okay. When I use my code, I got ha la. So that's ha plus la. That's CV plus CV. You see my coding starting to kick in? The hala is one of the oldest crafts. Okay? It does have a flower, a fruit, and a leaf, which is all used by our people. But most importantly, it's, designed, it, it's, it's in a rubbish plant or a pala. So when the lava flows, tutupere, the ohia plant is the first tree to come up. The ohia um, plant is the, the plant of Hawaii. And the second one is lauhala. That's to make rubbish, to make soil, and break down the rock. Lauhala actually was given to us by Tutuhina. This is the wife or wahine of Kanaloa. Make sure the goddess of our agriculture. This to us is the oldest craft in the entire world. It's beautification by some of our gods given to our people. So I'd like to share that. So let's move on. Lao Kahi. Lots of people know Kalo. I share with you Olena today. Ava. Some people call that Kava. Right? We get a um, Lao Kahi. Lao Lao. Right? So if I take Lao Lao, just like here, what I need to do to make Lao Lao is I'm going to grab my consonant vowel. Right? La. Then I'm going to take my vowel. Ooh. But you cannot use those again. You can only use it once to build a word. So let me give you an example of what I mean. In order to make the word lao lao, I gotta times that by two. Now what do I have? Lao lao. You see that? So if I give you one more example, and I come up with nene, does anybody know what this is? Goose. Nene. So when you say nene goose, you're saying goose goose. Because nene means goose. But again, I'm going to remind you, when you make a word, or you look at a word, or you're reading a word, you're trying to better pronounce a word, or build down, break down the word, when you make this word, you need ne, but you can't use ne twice. So you got to go ne times two. Ne ne. You see that? That's how olelo works. Interesting, yeah? Every word is like that. Honolulu. Again, when you understand how to build the word, how the word is built, you can break it down to better pronounce it, to better read it. That's my goal here. That's my objective. Okay. So, I said a paddle canoe, that'll be va'a. That's a CV 
plus a vowel. W-N plus a A. Or va and a. Va a. That means canoe. Okay? Honu. So, I'll take my ho, consonant vowel, and I'll take my N with all my vowels on it, and make honu. If I went ho no, right, then I'd have to come with my lu, but I'm going to times two my lulu. So I'm going to come with ho no and go lu, lu with the times two. That's how our words are built. Every word, every chant, every prayer, every song, every name. So I hope, again, that's my objective, that when you look at words or you read now, or you, you see signs, you can take that word and you start to break it down with your mind and your eyes and eventually your mouth. So, lao kahi, kahi means first. E kahi, e lua, e kolu, e ha, these are numbers. Now you can go home and use my formula, so I'm not going to teach you this stuff. You can go home and learn places, flowers, colors, numbers. But what I'm teaching you, this plant is called the first plant, first leaf. Just like the Hawaiian moon calendar, where we named every moon, they named this a special name. So imagine that. In the Bible they say something, some, something, um, a person's name is more treasure, more important than all the trinkets and treasures in, in the world. Right? Somebody's name. So let's move on. Real briefly, what I PowerPointed you today or Brit helped with is my application. And if you read, it's better to help you better pronounce, read, and build a little words, not speak it. It's designed for entertainment. Okay, Brit, you can, you can move on. Um, it's in a stage where I have students. Um, I have my, my, my philosophy in there, intros and basics. You can take reminder, I mean, memory, quizzes, codes, and, and, and puzzles and stuff like that. Okay, we have a place where we communicate together as a hui or as a group. Okay, move on. Um, games like this, move on. Um, you know, and events, move on. Move on there. Here, and, um, you know, here's an example of taking all the words that you might know. For example, all the words we use today, whether it's alphabets or vowels or consonants, have all the Hawaiian words for that. Kanaka ma'oli, kanaka ma'vai, kanaka ma'ole, ekumomai, makaokao, right? And for these alphabet consonants, I counted to five. Um, I talked about sound, I talked about work, I talked about looking with your eyes, I have all those alphabets, but you can go home now and take olelo ha'ole and olelo ha'vai and start to play with it yourself. That's where enthusiasm comes in, right? So again, this is an example on how you can take that home. Okay, so move on, right? So what I use is vehe vehe. You know, I, look, I use different sites, I use different calendars, but I'm sold, I wanna, I wanna learn it. So however you use books or chants, you go to dance school or whatever, now I hope you better understand how to use it. What I also share with you is part of my, oh, go back, right? Is my olu olu kuai, olu, um, ole ole kuai. That means, olu, ole ole means post. You know, like a trade post? A trade post. Kuai means to trade. And ole ole, ole ole actually means a trade, a, a post with goods on it. So I'm going to put my goods on it. I'm going to put my ava on it. I got my plants on it. I got my puzzles on it. And you can come and you can barter and trade with me. I'll barter and trade with you. Stones, gems, wood, soap. Stories, dance, teach me how to grow a conch shell, weevilé, dance hula, right? Do la hala. But I have a trade post. You're in it. Jew is part of it. Perfect harmony. My trade post has a quality. Let's move on here. Okay? So again, we have stuff in here. I look, you can have your products, your music. I have classes I teach, hemp cream. Um, I have products in there, everything here. I have products for my friends and my partners. Let's move on. Those products I have in this store. Again, you know, so you can order there, you can buy here. It's all part of our, our, our concept. Okay. So Pe'ao Ma'o Ma'o is like a blue cross or blue shield. Park a little farther, exercise. Eat a little healthier. Pe'a means cross. To make a cross, it really means a cross like an X, an X cross. 
Oba'oma or is the color green? So this is considered a green cross. Take a walk up here from the Hilo Farmer's Market. Park on the corner, come by and get refreshments, take a break. And you get Meaai, Meakanu, Manao, Mokolelo, Mele. What's that? Exercise in Kau Kau here at Ju Spa. That's called a destination. So Ju, Perfect Harmony is our first location. This is a green cross, a pe'a o ma'o ma'o location. That's the quality of the products or the goods and the services that's on my trade post. Ole ole kuai. So now she get to host our foods from our friends and our partners. Makau kau ai kako, bunch of guala. We get kumu cards, right? The flash cards. We get ilana mai, right? We get plenty of kanaka. They create with their hands and their minds in their own countries as subject of the Hawaiian kingdom. So again, that's the concept. E komamai, you welcome elanamai to come enjoy. Okay, so let's move on. Small break right now. Bathroom, any more albor mochi, get it, about five minutes or so. And then we're going to jump right into wrapping it up with the Mahina class, which is just references again to better read. I'm giving an example on how to read. So again, thanks again. Small little break. Talk stories, fall out, get a couple more refreshments, drink, just batch me if you gotta, stretch, we'll be right back. Whoa.